15 January 2023. This is one of the what a fuck moments of mine. And in this one I want to talk about the Solidar. The fall of Solidar or the battle of Solidar or whatever you want to call it. Solidar is uh, really close to Bakhmut. Now, the fighting has been going on there since late July, early August last year. It was a hell of a battle. And I could never understand why is the Ukrainians pumping in so, so much men and so much weapons there. There must be something serious there. Now, that Bakhmut Solidar region is uh, there's big gypsum mining there and salt mining. A very large percentage of the salt used in Europe comes from there. And last week I saw the first mentions about that. Now I want to show you some images. In Solidar still several hundred Ukrainian fighters descended and hid in the mines in two places, hoping to be rescued in the Ukrainian counter-offensive. You know, even if Ukrops will try to do it, they would not survive in those cold holes for several days. Surrender while you're alive. And look at that image. And here is another collection of images from that Solidar salt mine. The legendary mines of Solidar in a depth of 300 meters. Solidar has been center of industrial salt mining since 1881. The length of the salt mines in the city area has reached 200 kilometer at a depth of 300 meters. And I've read now some stuff where they have played soccer games, hosted soccer games in those caverns and tunnels and concerts and whatever. But the main thing is apparently there's a lot of weapons stashed under that in that those salt mines. And it's beginning to make sense why they were fighting so hard. Now, the Wagner group has taken control over Solidar and they have been into some of the mines already. And they have found a lot of ammunition and rockets and weapons. But uh, the rumor is that the big find is in Bakhmut. Now look at this. I never even imagined it. Look at the size of those tunnels. Look at this thing here. It is massive. Apparently there is tanks and armor personnel carriers and stuff in those mines. This is a section that they've dressed up for some event or what. And in this image you can get an idea of how high that roof is. So, Solidar is not just a little village. And the Wagner group stormed the place about two days ago after months of fighting. The Ukrainians, were, there were some Ukrainians that were encircled there. And I could have shown you pictures here of uh, fighting and so, but it is gory and it's really not something that I would like to share because from the videos that I've seen and from some of the posts that I've read those Ukrainian soldiers there most of them are so high on drugs they don't know where they are and they refuse to surrender so it, it is terrible the killing is horrific there but let's talk about the survivors. Let them tell their story. A resident of Solidar on her own words. We are so fed up with this Ukraine. They fucked up their own. Everything 
the whole city of Soledad. They didn't consider us human beings, but what is it? They shoot at their own if you figure it out right. She also said that they waited for a, they waited for long for the Russian army to arrive, and then when it finally happened, she organized a party of homemade food and tea for the guys. And there is so many videos of interviews with civilians from Soledad. Can you imagine? Just imagine it. You're in that city since late July last year. That is August, September, October, November, December, January. It's almost six months that you are stuck in the basements of these buildings and you can't get out and you can't move. And there are many reports of the Ukrainians shooting the civilians. And I've read some other reports and they said that there's a hell of a high percentage of the troops there are not Ukrainians, but foreigners, and the foreigners were shooting the civilians. A group of residents of Solidar on their own words. It turns out that they risked their lives for our lives. Those who rescued us out, who protected us, God bless them, they stayed with us all night, the Wagner guys. And then there's this one. Look at that image, that woman sitting there with her little dog. More and more locals from Solidar came out to tell the crimes perpetrated by the Ukrainian army. There's only devastation there. There's nothing left. Everything was destroyed by the Ukrainians. It's Ukraine that is to blame for this. And this is very similar to what happened in Mariupol. There's a big story in the Western press tells you it was the Russians that destroyed Mariupol. But if you listen to the independent journalists that are doing interviews with Mariupol residents, you will hear it is the Ukrainian army. And in Mariupol it was at Azov Brigade. So they did the same here. And from what I see, they're doing the same thing in Bakhmut. A Russian soldier risking himself saved the resident of Solidar with a child. We had to go under heavy fire for three and a half kilometers. I am very grateful for him for this. I don't even know his name, but I'm very grateful. He put his body armor on me and we went out like that. And that is the Wagner uh, soldiers that did most of the work there. In Solidar, the armed forces of Ukraine were hiding behind civilians. Where people are, they settled nearby. Duck trenches in front of our houses every way they wanted. And they were telling us that if something goes wrong, if there is an arrival, then they'll just throw, a gren uh, throw in a grenade. Basically, they were threatening us all in all ways possible. And then this woman. Ukraine Nazis are complete scum, just creatures. These are terrible people. We had no food, no water. We went from apartment to apartment and drained water from boilers to drink. Ukraine Nazis shot my husband in the knee when he went out with his dog for a walk. And this is the same story that we told in Mariupol. Exactly the same story. A refugee from Solidar about the atrocities of the Ukrainians in the city. The woman said that the fire at the that the fire at the city often came from Chasov, Ukraine territory. And now Ukrainian soldiers shot civilians and target fire at residential buildings. There were many of us in town, still very many of us in town. At first they were having fun throwing mines between the houses. All windows fly out in the blast wave. And this is what that Ukrainian soldiers did there. And at this point, I've become used to the fact that the Western press do not tell the story of what's happening in the Donbass. They only give you the story of what's happening in the West of Ukraine and 
they totally ignore the atrocities that are being committed towards the residents. But I just thought I would like to share this with you so you can get some background of what the hell is going on there in Solidar. They're now busy cleaning up and mopping up. But there's the reports that I see, there is hundreds and hundreds of dead Ukrainian soldiers in basements, in passages, in the fields, in the trenches. The Ukrainian army did not take their wounded and dead away. They left the guys just there. But that is what I've become used to. And uh, I will tell you this side of the story. If you want the other side, just look on the TV, look on the newspapers, and you'll get that side. But at least you've got the information and you can make your own mind up. Here by me, it is as hot as hell. It's load shedding and uh, the low felt is cooking, but we will survive. Please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing. Have a great evening.